the daily live stream, our coffee Q&A here on the Owner Coffee Channel. I'm your host, Jay. We do a coffee a talk every weekday morning, Monday through Friday. Well, at least most of them. So what's going on? How y'all doing? I'm still in Las Vegas where I'm just getting ready to head out because I'm on today I'm going to be making my way to Salt Lake City to go visit uh, with my friend John Piquet of Cafe de Bola and maybe shoot some videos there about his uh, coffee shop and um, yeah, yeah, so we're finally, it's, it's a nice day here in Las Vegas. As you can see, I am not on the strip, which is a good thing. I try not to stay on the strip when I'm here in Vegas because it's just craziness there and it's also a little bit of madness. Mom, good morning to you. How are things in New York City? And Craig and good things in Ottawa. Hope they're going on. How good to see all of you guys. So today I thought I would share with you a little bit about coffee in a hotel. And what in my hotel, I'm staying at a place called the Hampton Inn. And this is the coffee setup they offer for us in the room. And basically it's this uh, simple setup with a Hamilton Beach coffee maker. Keone, a lot to you. Hey, Keone, you know, I was, uh, since I'm in Vegas, right, my friend, I, when, I, when I went out to dinner with her last night, and, but when I was coming up, she was like, where do you want to go to eat? And I was like, there's only one place I want to eat in Vegas, and that's Zippy's. <laughs> so if you guys aren't familiar with Zippy's, Zippy's is essentially the Hawaii Denny's. That's really the best way to, to describe it. It is a, a diner style food. They have outdoor to go or just kind of outdoor casual. And then they have indoor service seating. And man, it is, it is, it is the greatest food. It is, it is the food that I dream about the most. So I had the fried chicken with chili, rice, mac salad. Uh, and then, then they were, my, my friend, she was like, let's get some dessert. And I was like, all right, let's get some dessert. So she wanted a malasada. And they have this thing there now called mochi sada, which is basically kind of like a malasada. And if you're not familiar with malasada, malasada is a Portuguese um, fried dough. So they're fried dough balls that are fried and then coated with sugar. Super popular in Hawaii. And they make a version called mochi sada, where they use the mochi, the rice dough, uh, the rice flour to make it. So it's really nice and, you know, um, Chewy and gooey. Oh, so delicious. If you, ever, if you ever have those like newer versions called mochi nut donuts, that's kind of similar but bigger. So yeah, yeah. If you ever come to Vegas or more important, if you go to Hawaii, you have to go to Zippy's because it is what everybody wants to, to, to drink there. Okay, so we've got this brewer. This is the Hamilton Be <laughs> Yeah, I know, right? It makes you hungry. And this is the Hamilton Beach Brewer. It, it's fairly simple. So we got the brewer here. Put the water in. I have not used this at all, but we're just gonna use it for the first time today. And 500 watts, so you can see 500 watts. You know, what you get in, what you get in most hotels is not really like crazy great coffee. It's always kind of simple coffee. Uh oh. We have more cord, okay, we have more cord. The nice thing about this, it allows you to push your cord in here so there's a little bit extra length, which is great. I need a little more length. Plug that in, hopefully that won't. I'm plugging it into, oh, yeah. Oh, I think I can plug in this better. There's a couple ports around here and hopefully this there'll be enough power in these plugs to support this. Okay, so we've got this going on. They also give you this, oh, interesting. So this requires some kind of filter and basket. They now have these disposable, oh yeah, disposable recyclable coffee pot holders. So you can reuse them during Sarah. I wonder why they went to this, because it's a, you know, these are, they used to be integrated into the, into this. Sealed for my protection, exactly, exactly. And so it's super cheap, right? That's fine. And then what we have here, we have, 
Oh. Hang on. Oh, yeah, my room's kind of a mess. So they've got regular and decaf coffees in, I guess, what are pods. So this is made by a company called Safai. Right there. That's so much, so much better. There we go. Safai. And it's just here for best brewing, open package and place filter pack into brew basket. Prepare according to brew instructions for best results. Brew immediately after opening package. Well, at least they're talking about opening right, you know, using right away because, you know, I'm sure they've probably, you know, of course these are frack packs and there feels like pods inside. And I guess they want you to use it right away, which is good. That's good t tips. Kenny says, probably so they don't know they to clean the machines too often. I don't think places like this clean their machines <laughs> for their guests. But yeah, maybe that's true, maybe that's true. There it is. Okay. There's our pod. And so the pod goes in here like that. I wonder though, is this enough coffee? Well, I guess we should just go for it. Let's go for it. Use both the calf and decaf at the same time. Well, all right, let's try it out. We'll try one out. I do have two decafs and two regulars, so we can try that. Should we try that? Yeah, let's give it a try. Here's the decaf. Those two are now together. We're gonna take that. Wow, that tastes, that, that smells. Use both, okay, okay, both caps, fine, 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 fine. Here's the other last one. That was a lot easier than using my tea. Yeah, the, the, the aroma difference is definitely, that's less appealing, less appealing. So put that in here. Good coverage. We're gonna place that inside here. They give us, oh, they give us some cups. And, oh, this is cute. Look at this. They have, they have like a little mustache. So when you're drinking, huh? <laughs> so we're gonna take that, place this here. There is a little button here that says press to start. Moist toenails, man. How are you doing? Good to see you. Welcome back to the show. Good to have you. So it doesn't. Okay, so it, it, there is a bit of a gap, right? There's a bit of a gap. Oh, and I can feel it's already pretty warm down there. So I'm, I'm, because I plugged in, I'm sure the heating element is already rolling. And as you can see, let's actually, let's, before we start, you can see that there's a, a reservoir, right? Reservoir here, and water goes down into the heating element where it is flash boiled, and that boiling action pushes the, the, the liquid up through the tube and then onto the coffee bed through the filter hole here. It's fairly much the same system that's used in home brewers throughout the industry now. And we do have some, uh, we do have some instructions and yeah, we've got pretty much the same instructions here you can see. And it says, allow a coffee brewer to cool for one minute between making batches. All right, so we're gonna put this in here as thus. Oh, God, it doesn't really go in there with much authority and confidence. Put that in there. Oh, you've been sick. Oh man, I'm sorry to hear that. I'm sorry to hear that. Okay, so we're gonna take that, now we're gonna take our bottle, we've got, I've got a bottle here of Sam's Purified Water. This is a, how many ounces is this? 
10 fluid ounces. So we're gonna put that water in. Oh, it only holds about eight ounces, which is good to know. Press to start. Light comes on. Let's see what happens. I can feel it's warm. It's warm on the bottom. Oh, there it is, already coming through. So you know the water's hot coming out. Like we don't. There's no real strong control in the temperature, but you know the water's hot because it's boil. It, it's coming out, and it wouldn't come out unless it had been boiled by the heating element because the heating element and the water are all in the bottom. So that's one thing about these brewers that are, you know, fairly clever designs. Well, Moist, I hope you're feeling better. So as you can see, it drops into the top. It doesn't look like it's going many places, so let's do a little shaky, shaky, shaky. Maybe that'll help get more saturation of the coffees. Actually, you know, it's interesting because with this new adaptation, I'm sure these were designed with a full basket that was like closing it up and making it look really pretty. But I think this is kind of more fascinating because you can see the water as it flows down. So as it's boiling a little bit and coming up, it falls down a little bit. So you're, not, you're seeing that just a kind of a, it comes in spurts. The liquid that's brewing here looks definitely a lot lighter now. We're probably about halfway through the cycle, or maybe about 6% through. So there was a click, I think, that maybe that it had... No? I thought I was gonna say, I was gonna say maybe it had completed its cycle, but no, not yet. We're getting pretty full on the cup. I'd say it's about two-thirds of the way full now. Starting to lose my grip on my uh, hand. Oh yeah, oh yeah, oh, oh, oh it's burning here. All right, so that sounds like our cycle is complete. I'm gonna unplug it before this thing catches fire. All right, so pretty much all the liquid has flowed through and we've got our little pods here. Let's look at our pods and see how they look. Uh, what can we discern from that? I don't know whether we can discern from that, but we're gonna continue on. We'll just toss that in the trash. And then we've got our elixir here. The, what do you call it? This is the, the Safai coffee, regular, for hotels. Brewed in a Hamilton Beach. HDC200B. Mm -hmm. Exciting, exciting. It's fairly hot, actually. You know, it's not... So we use a double brew, right? We use two pods to make it. And it's not... It's if Even with two pods and like maybe eight ounces, it feels pretty light. Maybe, maybe the pods are really rated for four ounce cups. Probably. That's probably that maybe makes more sense. So we're probably right along the typical dosage for this coffee. 
um, with the pods from Safai out of Louisville, Kentucky. Safai Coffee. I guess you can look them up if you if you want and see. <laughs> oh, let's see what that should be. Let's let, let us look it up. <laughs> excuse me, excuse me, my goodness. SafaiCoffee.com. Here it is, dedicating to providing unique coffee experiences. They're using a nice looking roaster, old school. Oh, they've got a bunch of certifications, Rainforest, USDA, all that stuff. They do wholesale coffee solutions. Oh, so this is this is their this is their owner, their master roaster, Mike Safai, produces exceptionally. No, no, ethically sourced coffees while while oh while building loyal relations, right? Said no, that's not right. Relationships. Oh yeah, I'm reading it actually through the mirror that's behind the wall. <laughs> so it's actually backwards by reading. Relationships and and sleep. Okay, I'm not gonna do that because I'm just feeling like. And sharing support through the Safai Foundation and coffee growing communities. So that's good. That's good. It's here's the thing. Like this is definitely not the kind of coffee that we typically revel in in the in, the, in our niche of the business or on the show. This is this is just. I mean, it's not bad per se. It's clean cup. It's just not exciting coffee. It's fairly lightly brewed. I mean, the, the, the ratio is fairly light like that. I don't really have much to say about it. It's just kind of neutral hotel coffee. It's not terribly, um, it's not terribly bad. How much Robusta do I think? I'm gonna say it could be all robusta. It could be a majority robusta. I would say maybe at least half robusta, I would think. But it, it's not terrible. Like, it's not, it's definitely not exciting coffee, but it's not horrible coffee. Like, I've had some horrible tasting coffees. And this is definitely, I can't say, this is, I cannot say this is part of that. Like, if I was at a hotel, which I am, this would be okay, and I really in, was in need of having a coffee to start my day. This is, would be all right. And so, here, if I if I needed caffeinated delivery to make me feel whole, and this is the thing that that I, where I vary from a lot of people that I know is that I don't really have an addiction to coffee. Like I'm, I enjoy coffee very much, and I I can have coffee, but I don't wake up in the morning and need coffee, if you know what I mean, right? Like, a lot of my friends, they need to have a cup of coffee to start their day, and they need that caffeine boost that's going to help them get up and get going. And my entire life, I've never really drank, until I got into the coffee business 20 some years ago, I really didn't drink coffee. Like, my father, when I was growing up, my father drank, um, <laughs> Taster's choice, and I was, you know, of course, when you're when you're young and your dad does something, you're always kind of fascinated, so you want to give it a try. So I tried, you know, you try, I would try his coffee, and it was terrible, like just just terrible. Like I just remember hating it. Like I don't like the bitterness. I don't like the bitter coffee, oh, especially when I was young, right? Um, Kelly says, "I know you will have good coffee in Salt Lake City." I'm looking forward to that. Looking forward to that. And uh, so I never grew up drinking coffee. I grew up disliking coffee immensely. And even when I would have things that were really extremely sweet, like coffee ice cream, gosh, I hated that even more. Like, I just didn't even want to try it. And so what, what really happened for me was that, you know, I smoke cigars, I enjoy cigars, and I started going to this cigar shop in, in Baltimore, and the owner was, a, was really into coffee, and he served coffee at his, cafe, at his coffee shop, I mean, a cigar shop, from a place called White House Coffee somewhere in Long, uh, in Long Island, New York. And it was just fairly average stuff. I'm, you know, now that I look back on it, it's fairly average stuff, but it was, to me, 
So he would serve coffee there, and he was selling coffee to clients, to people in the, in the strip center they were in. So he actually sold enough coffee during the week to pay the rent for the, bill, for the, for the whole shop. So while he was a cigar shop, his rent was paid by coffee. And every once in a while, he'd, he would encourage people to drink coffee, and he'd give me like a, a cup of coffee for free. So I began a 16 ounce, probably a flavored coffee, maybe hazelnut, hazelnut coffee, I think it was. 16 ounce hazelnut coffee, and I would take a lot of cream because I wanted to get nice and creamy, and sugar packets. I put six sugar packets, and that would make the coffee pleasingly palatable for me. And I would drink that coffee with my cigar and have a really nice time with it. So that's kind of how I got started drinking coffee. And oh, one moment, it's messaging me about take your meds. <laughs> Thanks, mom. And the uh, what am I thinking? Maybe she's watching. That's probably why she's messaging me. So I'm I'm drinking this 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 coffee and. Then finally, when I got into the coffee business, then I, I started drinking off coffee more. But I, I never was at the point where I had to get up in the morning and drink coffee. So, but I do understand a lot of you know a lot of our guests, a lot of my friends are, are like that. And so, if you're in a situation where you're somewhere in the world and you don't have coffee, like you're in a hotel like this, like I am now, this will fairly suffice for that purpose. And Craig says. Half the battle is avoiding watery hotel coffee. <laughs> By the way, I have a drip brewer on my bed table. Really? <laughs> That'd be amazing. And Keone says, when I was a kid, we would sometimes have pokivai, coffee, lots of milk. You know what? I don't know what pokivai is. What is pokivai? Pokivai, coffee, lots of milk, usually carnations of apple. Oh, yeah, nice, nice, nice. Sugar and saloon pilot. Oh, saloon pilot crackers. Gosh, you know, that's the... Uh, most times we would have hot cocoa instead. Oh, yeah. See, I, I, I loved hot cocoa. I love that. I love that. I, I, would, I drank. I was much more into chocolate than I was into coffee or maybe more than anything else. What I did drink a lot of when I was younger and, and still to today was, is hot tea. Like my, um, my Hanai grandmother, which, uh, my adopted grandmother, um, this, this really nice American white lady, love her to death. Like she passed away quite a number of years ago, sadly. And she was the closest thing to a grandmother I ever had. But she was, um, I would stay with her because she started out my babysitter when I was really, really young and I spent most of my really, really young years with her. And she loved to drink hot tea. And so she would drink Lipton's hot tea and water with a little bit of milk and some honey. And so I grew up drinking, loving tea. And so I, I drink iced tea and like, well, that like, tea, tea, tea for me. I like tea more than I like coffee, but I, I, I do coffee professionally. Like a lot of times when we had the Hamden location and I needed a place to go hide out, I would go to the Starbucks not too far from my house and I would just order the big iced tea because I didn't really like the coffee there. <laughs> and for me, so what I mean by that is that the co I don't like the coffee. I, don't, I didn't grow up li you know, liking coffee or needing coffee. So coffee for me is really just about a pleasurable flavor experience. So that's why I'm, I tend to be relatively picky about when I drink coffee or, or where I drink coffee and how I drink coffee because I'm, I'm really enjoying it for the, the pleasurable aspect of the coffee rather than some kind of vehicle to feed me uh, caffeine. So it's just a little bit of a different experience than a lot of people. But you know, I gotta say, man, you, you say things like saloon crackers and now I gotta, I'm thinking maybe I need to go grocery shopping before I leave Vegas because I don't think they have these kind of things up in, in uh, in Salt Lake, and actually, I went to Zippy's yesterday, last night. I'm gonna go to Zippy's after I pick up my rental car, after I leave this hotel, after doing this show. Because you know what, there's this, there's this special that I'm running on Zippy's, right? If you have the app, you go in and you will, if you do four transactions between now and some date that has $20 or more, you'll get a free entry or you'll get an entry into their 
trip to Japan giveaway. So they're, they've, they've partnered with Jet Air, that, that really low-cost economy airline that's flying from different points in the United States to Japan. And you'll get a, a trip to Japan. And I was like, oh, my gosh, man. Maybe I could win that. And, you know, it, and I, so when I first saw it a couple weeks ago on their, on their social media, I was like, I messaged the, the, the account. And I was like, does this work at the Vegas location? They're like, well, yes, it does. And I was like, hmm. I'm gonna be in Vegas. So last night I asked I asked my our, our waitress. I said, "Hey, can you uh, can you split this in some way so I can get as many transactions out of this as possible?" Our bill was like eighty five dollars, and I was like, "And she said, oh yeah, 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 no problem." And so she she, she split into three different transactions. So I got three of the four, and I was like, "If I, even if I get two, I'll still go back because I'm gonna have breakfast there, and then I'm gonna go and." Buy I don't know they, some mochi some some of the mochi sauce and because I'm gonna so I'm, after this I'm going to go to St George to visit one of my dearest friends Annie Ruth she's uh, one of my dearest friends and also one of the producers I've worked with a lot over the years to make beautiful coffee she's she's a wonderful coffee producer from El Salvador and uh, in 2015 she was easily the best coffee I, I had that year and so super meticulous really just beautiful beautiful stuff and I'm kind of wondering what is she doing in St George like she used to live in San Salvador, then she moved to Temecula, and then now she's here, and I was like, because well, she messaged me the other day, and the other week, or last week, and she's like, are you going to Chicago? I was like, no, I said, I said to her, yeah, of course, you're going to be there. She said, no, no, no. She's like, when are you going to come visit? I said, well, I'll probably be in California next month, and she's like, oh, I mean, she's like, well, I'm in, I'm in Utah now. I was like, Utah, what, Utah, crazy. And I said, well, then I'm going to be in Las Vegas, and I'll come see you. So, yeah, yeah. And so Moist Toenail says, some same. I never really had any effect or feeling from caffeine. It does not keep me. Yeah, you know, I can pretty much go drink caffeine at night and go to bed. I'm totally with you on that. All right, have a, good, have a great one there, Moist. See you next time. <laughs> yeah, it, it, it's, it, it's, it's late night in Singapore, right? It's probably like, or it's just time to go out in Singapore. <laughs> oh, no, it's 7.30. Here in Vegas, 10.30 at home. So it's probably 10, oh, it's 10.30 at night there. So yeah, yeah, okay, yeah, time to, time to bed, time for bed. So I'm here in Vegas, I'm about to leave, and I've got to, I did some shopping yesterday at the show. I, I was very, I was very, very, oh, here, I'm going to show you this one thing that I did get. This is the other coffee that I was telling you yesterday that I, I got from Finca. It, it's covered, unfortunately. Finca Fay and oh no, I can't see it. Sorry, Maddie. Finca Fay and Grace, maybe Grace. I'm gonna think it's Grace because maybe I think it might be her her children's name. So oh no, no, it's her family's name. I don't know. I don't know. So this is by my friend Mary Portillo, who's from Capucas in. Uh, Honduras, she was, like I said, she, oh, 928, oh, 920 in Thailand, so it's probably pretty much the same time as in um, Singapore, right? Yeah, because I think, or oh, maybe uh, Singapore's an hour ahead could be the same time as the Philippines. I don't know, I don't know, well, it's almost time for bed. And so this is a, um, oh, Fe and Gracia, there it is, I can see it, there's another listing here, Fe and Gracia, which is essentially braised. And what do we have? This is a, a red Katuai, Katuai Rojo, and uh, from 1,790 meters. So Mari Portillo is, is, a, is a woman that I met quite a few years ago, maybe 20, somewhere in the mid-2010s. Um, I was down in, in Honduras in San Pedro Sula to be the head judge for their Brisa championship, and she was a competitor, she won. And so her family has a farm, this Finca Fe and Gracia, and she was like, hey, would you like some coffee? And I was like, I would love to have some coffee. And she only had some, some roasted left. So when we get back, when I get back to Baltimore, we're going to be drinking these coffees. Drinking, finally, other coffees, coffees other than my own that are relatively fresh, that are under a year old. <laughs> but it's been a good time here in Vegas. I have, uh, like I said yesterday, I was, I'm here attending the National Association of Broadcasters trade show and convention it's the big like television movie production streaming whatever 
deal. And I, yesterday I spent the whole day on the production show floor. So there's basically this entire convention hall that's just for the production side. Swipe away. Wilson, good to see you, man. Good to see you. We're in Vegas. You can see the, the Palms. Palms. The Palms Hotel. Kind of see it right there, Palms. Off the strip. But we are... Um, so I was really good in, in Chicago about not getting a lot of stuff. I was, I, I was doing really well yesterday. I did not get a lot of stuff yesterday. I mean, the, the first day on, on Monday. But yesterday, Tuesday, I kind of fell down. I kind of fell down like there's all these deals going on. And I, actually, I don't really need to buy anything big. I just needed some, some tools. And so, for example, some of the things, one of the things that I got was at these. <laughs> these arms. Now, for you guys in coffee, this this is just, you know, nothing. But for, for me, who makes videos, these are super helpful tools. And they're ridiculously cheap. Like this company, what's it called? Selens. Selens. <laughs> like, if you need grip gear, man, these guys have crazy pricing. Like, incredible. There's something we call a Mayfer, I mean, I'm not a Mayfer, but um, a Methylene or a Cardellini clamp is this particular type of clamp that is big, long, and threaded. It's got this big thing that spins, and, and it has these, these jaws that, 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 that open and close, right? Well, if you buy the, the Cardellini, the one that, that's made by um, American Grip, or the, if you get the Methylene that's made by Matthews, they're pretty pricey, like they're like, I don't know, 100 bucks, 100 something per clamp, and that's a lot of money for the clamps. <laughs> These guys sell them for like 40 bucks. So crazy deals, and these are and these are like in the tens of dollars, right? Like this arm here, this is a, what we call like a, um, what is this called, a ball arm. So you, um, you loosen up and you can, you know, kind of put it into different configurations, and then you just basically lock it, and then it's got this suction cup, right? So, and then I've got this Arca Swiss clamp on it, and you put all this together, and like, this is maybe $30, right? This is, yeah, but if you bought this alone, this arm alone from a lot of the companies that are making them, the arm itself is like a hundred some dollars. So, you know, it's, it's like for 30 bucks, it's a crazy, crazy deal. And I was like, so I bought this one. And then I was like, the first day, because I was like, okay, deal. Because what I'm looking for is, I'm looking for something that I can use for, hook my iPhone to, to the, to the car. So I can, you know, navigate with it. Because, you know, I know a lot of these clamps that are available, they are, what do you call it? They have, um, they clamp to your vent. I don't like that. I just I just want to get all my air conditioning in the summertime. So I've always wanted a window clamp. So they, these are you know these are made for that, and these are this was a fairly simple. One. They the other ones that use this this um, pump action, they they didn't have any more. And so I got this one that's just basic. You twist it and it creates the suction. And um, the nice thing about these arms though, like I got this at least these the the, the the piece of these arms, they use a, uh, they're threaded with airy locator pins. So these are what's called airy locator pins, so that if you have, you can, you can get some pieces that have machine pins, holes here, so there's three instead of one, and these will clip click into those, and that will create a very solid collection so you don't, it doesn't twist unlocked, right? You know, that's one of the things what I think I'm gonna do when I get home, like this is, this is just plastic, so I'm just gonna take a, I'm gonna mark it, take a drill and just put holes in them so that I can have like a locator pin on it. It won't be pretty, but at least you can, and, but nobody will see it. And Craig's like, you know, Jay comes home with a pen, and I would love that, I would love that. Actually, we were looking yesterday at the, at the one of the booths at the American Society of Cinematographers booth. They actually had a, um, a pen of gold too, which is one of the old, like old school, well now it's old school. Back in the 90s when I was really active in, in motion picture production, it was like almost state of the art. 
like the G2 was out and then they just came, but, but at the time that I was in the business in the mid 90s, I think in the mid 90s, maybe the early 90s, they came out with the platinum. So there was the gold, the gold two, the platinum, then there's the millennium and then the millennium XL. And you know, to see one of these old ones, that was cool. And then this other booth had a, an Airy 435, which is the Airy version of a 35 millimeter camera. And this guy was, this rental house was trying to modernize it by putting, you know, mounting plates on it that was adding battery power. And the thing about the, the 435 is that they use 28 amp power, I mean 28 volt DC power to, to power itself, which meant you had these big belts or like big bricks to carry with you back in the day. And they modified it so that you can put um, like V-mount or gold mount batteries on them to make it more modern. Like the big battery, the big block Anton Bauer batteries you might see like on uh, television cameras or on like smaller stuff today. So they're trying to modernize that system so you can put all the new accessories and transmitters and they put like HD, HD uh, video tap on it so you can run video off of it, you know, for a video assist. So interesting stuff if you, if you, if you follow that kind of thing. And then I stopped by the Porter Brace booth. The Porter Brace, if you're not familiar with Porter Brace, is um, they're a big uh, equipment bag manufacturer, mainly for the television industry. A lot of ENG guys are running around, and I used to run around with a lot of, well, I have a lot of Porter Brace stuff, and I was talking to the guy, and he gave me this pouch, this like padded pouch, he's like, as a gift, and I was like, oh man, thank you very much, it's awesome, dude. Awesome, like, padded pouch. So I'm keeping my, my arms in there for now. So you can put pretty much anything you want to be protected in here. So that's kind of cool. Put that in there. Oh, and I also got a, one of the booths. We're getting out these USB cables. This one has denim wrapped with a you know, nice like denim stitching. Look at that. That's kind of cool, right? And then it's got this leather strap. So USB-C, and it's got powered delivery. So that's going to go with my, my phone setup. And then I've got a phone clamp and also... What else did I get? I got this from Condor Blue. These are 15 millimeter rails. These go on your, your camera rig. And the rails that I have, these I have these 15 millimeter rails. They're pretty, they're pretty cheap. They're like 10 years old, but they I think they're too thick. I think they might be like 15.2 or something like that. It's ridiculous. Cause like one of the 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 accessories that I have from Tilta doesn't really fit on it. And then Condor Blue has this D tap distribution thing that actually has a little readout. So this readout here will tell you how much power is left on your battery. You don't really need this, but I just thought it looks cool. And I was like, okay, that's gonna look cool on the camera. So this all goes on the big FX30, the one that I was using in uh, for the Eclipse. All right, so I guess that's pretty much it for today. I should run off because I gotta go get the car. I have to go back to the airport rental center get my car. I think they're giving me a Toyota Prius at Avis. So it's going to be some nice times. Nice time driving, I think. Got my sunglasses from uh, from Jenna Padaka. And, uh, all right. So I hope this helps. Um, tomorrow we will be coming to you from Salt Lake City. I'll be there. Um, yeah, I'm staying at a hotel there. I don't know what we're going to do. And then tomorrow I'll be shooting at um, Cafe de Bola for the whole day. So if you happen to be in town, come and visit. Thank you, Mom, I appreciate that. I will try to be conscientious. I have to go and have more bad meals today. Breakfast at Zippy's. Yesterday I had all bad meals. Jack in the box for breakfast. Then after the, then for lunch, I went over uh, to the other side of the street to the In-N-Out. And then I went to Zippy's. <laughs> so food, that's not, I've been walking like 10, 12, 15,000 steps a day. I have wiped all that out in the last, uh, in the last, what, 24 hours. All right, thank you, Keone. Aloha to you. All right, thank you guys, everybody. Be back again tomorrow here on the Coffee Q&A. So hope you have a wonderful day or wonderful night. And uh, see you next time.